Hello, this is Jordan with NCDPI. Welcome to the first of three videos focused on the student UID system. So in this video, we're going to go over an introduction and overview of the UID system and kind of how it works. Uh, and we're going to take a look at how you can get access to the system. So this video is intended for staff who regularly work with student enrollment records and student update records within PowerSchool, PowerSchool data managers, LEA coordinators, and DPI support staff. So if you fall into one of those categories, you're in the right place. By the end of this video, uh, we hope that you have enough information to be able to describe the overall purpose of the system, describe the criteria used by UID in the assignment and matching process, uh, and understand how to get access to the system itself. All right, let's talk a little bit about the ID assignment process and matching process inside of UID. So what's the UID system? Student UID system, the overall purpose is to allow us the ability to randomly generate unique identification numbers for students. Uh, and we want those uh, numbers to follow students across time and location uh, such that they have the same UID uh, for every year that they're enrolled in a school in North Carolina, no matter what school they transfer in and out of inside the state. A few key terms to keep in mind, the master record, that's the current active record inside the UID database, uh, which is used for matching purposes. The submission or input record uh, this is the record that's actually submitted by the user uh, via a service such as PowerSchool to UID. Uh, and Unique ID, this is the ID that's assigned by Unique ID, and we call it the UID. A few more key terms, match threshold. This is a numeric value between 0 and 100 uh, that's created by the system and is used by UID for its matching process. Valid ID, this is also generated by the UID system uh, and it's seen as the active ID for a student. Just a couple of notes there, the valid ID may not be the correct ID. Uh, and an example of this would be if the same student has multiple UID records inside the system. Uh, also note that students have to have a valid UID in order to be enrolled in PowerSchool. The alias ID or alternate ID, uh, this ID was originally generated from a legacy system such as CCAS or MORA 4. These were created during the NC WISE era, so pre-2012. Um, just note that if you see these types of IDs, um, there's also, there should also be a valid UID associated with that student or with that alias ID. Okay, so we're gonna step through the ID assignment process at a high level inside of UID, starting with um, the different types of data submission options that uh, we have. The first one you can see there at the top of the screen is the file upload data submission option. Uh, this is also referred to as a batch upload. These are files that contain one or more student records in them, and those files are submitted directly to UID for processing all at once. Online entry, an example of this would be if an independent school inside the state or a home school is registering their student with UID. And then the most common data submission option that's used is the web services option. And an example of this would be PowerSchool. So when data is submitted to UID, it can run through one of three paths. The first path that data can run through inside the UID system is the no match path. Uh, so this occurs when, let's say, you're enrolling a student via PowerSchool and the system uh, cannot find any student currently in the system that matches the one you're enrolling. So when this happens, the system automatically creates a new UID for that student and the process is completed. If during the enrollment process, you submit a record to UID, let's say via PowerSchool, and the system finds a list of one or more students already in the UID system 
that may match the one you're enrolling, it creates a list of near match records. Uh, and this is where human intervention is required. So those near matches automatically go back to the user and the user has to decide if the near match records that they see match the student that they're enrolling. If one of those near matches does match the enrollment record, the user selects that near match and then the UID system automatically updates that master record. The submission record in that case is then canceled. Alternatively, if the user does not identify the correct student in the list of near matches that are sent to the user, the user selects the input record and a new ID is created for that student. The third path that data can take is when a match is found or an exact match. Uh, so let's say that same student is enrolled via PowerSchool and during the process of matching, the UID system uh, identifies an exact matching student inside of the system for the one that you're enrolling. So in these cases, uh, the, the master record inside of UID is updated uh, and the system is complete or the process is completed. So this is just an overview of the different types of data submission options that we have at our disposal to send records to UID and how the UID system then assigns its ID. Here's an overview of the actual matching process that takes place inside of UID. So it should be noted that this matching process takes place um, in the background and automatically inside the UID process. So typically, if you're in PowerSchool and you enroll or update a student, you're not going to see this process take place. But this is what's happening. Uh, as you can see, an input record goes into the system and UID then creates an index of potential candidates. Uh, once that index is created, the system then uh, runs through several algorithms to develop a match score for each potential candidate. And from there, those scores are then used to decide uh, by the system, um, do we have a match, a near match, or no match? So what does the student UID system look for when it's assigning ID? Uh, during an exact match, uh, if the input record contains a UID uh, that the system already has in, it, in its database, it treats that in the, as an exact match and the master record is updated. If the input record has the same gender and birth date as an existing student UID, it also treats that as an exact match. In near match instances, uh, UID uses the first name, last name, gender, birth date, and the social security number if it's provided um, to develop near match scores. And over on the right, you can see the weights that are assigned to each one of those criteria for near matching. Also note that the first name, last name, gender, and birth date criteria are minimum requirements when you're enrolling a student via PowerSchool. And the reason for that is those are the criteria that are used by UID uh, at a minimum to run through its matching process. Here's an overview of the matching process in example form, so let's say you're enrolling a student via PowerSchool uh, and you submit an input record uh, for Jose R. Martinez, who's a male, born in April 1978. Uh, the system then takes that record and indexes it uh, with potential candidates. In this case, you can see it found four potential candidates based on the input record. And then it uses those candidates in the input record to create match scores for each potential candidate which you can see over on the right. So in this case, uh, for each one of those records that has a match score, the first one having 85, then 84, 89, and 79. From here, if any of the records fit into the uh, near match threshold, those are then sent back to the user and the user can decide. Are any of these near matches the student I'm trying to register? Maybe it's the Joseph Martinez who has a score of 89. If so, the user selects Joseph uh, and the master record's updated. Uh, if none of these near matches match the student you're trying to enroll, 
you would select Jose R. Martinez, the input record, and a new UID would be created for that student. All right, now that we've gone over uh, the system itself and kind of an overview of how it works, um, now we're going to talk about how you can get access to the system. Who can be granted access? So each LEA and charter school appoint a security officer prior to granting access to school level staff. Uh, and the main reason that that takes place is because obviously when you're enrolling students or updating student information, you're dealing with personal identification information. And we want to make sure that LEAs are in compliance with FERPA whenever they're granting access to these systems. Access to the UID systems are at the discretion of each LEA and charter school once the security officer has been approved by the state. Um, here are a list of steps to register for access to the system. So step one, you navigate to the registration system webpage listed there. Uh, and then you log in using your NCID credentials. So make sure you have your NCID credentials before you try and log into the system. Uh, then you complete the form uh, and make sure you select the appropriate role that you're applying for. Uh, once you submit the registration, you'll receive a pending approval confirmation email. Uh, and once your request has been approved or denied, you'll receive another email letting you know of the outcome. If you're a security officer, once you've been granted approval, you can then go back through steps one through three to register and then approve other school level staff in your LEA. So this is a screenshot of what you'll see when you log into the registration system. Uh, this is the registration form. And as you can see, it asks you to identify what program you're in, what role you're applying for, and then some general information about um, who you are and where you work with a place for notes to the administrator at the bottom of that form. For site security officers, once you've been granted access, you can actually go back into the registration system and click on the button that you see there at the top that says register for access to additional programs or schools so that you can be on the list to approve um, incoming registrations to the various schools or charter schools that fall inside of your LEA. So as a security officer, when people inside of your LEA register for access to the UID system, you'll receive an email of the request. Uh, at that point, you can log into the registration system and you should see a list of pending, rec uh, pending registrations that you can either approve or deny. Once you do, the system then sends uh, an automated email back to the, the registrant, letting them know if they've been granted access. Just a couple of best practices. As a security officer, you want to make sure that you're regularly reviewing accounts and disabling accounts um, in the UID registration system for staff who are no longer in the LEA. Um, also note that you, you may want to stay in touch with the HR coordinator in your LEA because they can assist you with letting you know who no longer works in your LEA. So you can then go back and disable their access to UID. So now that we've talked about uh, the UID system and how to get access to it, just wanted to provide, provide you with a few resources for support. Um, that top link there will take you to the student UID webpage, which has access to the system as well as supporting documentation. The second link is to the NCSIS admission and withdrawal webpage. Uh, you can see there a link to uh, the NCSIS webinar recordings webpage. Uh, and then the last two bullets are links to uh, pages on NCSIS related to updates to home-based systems, such as the UID system, uh, just to keep you up to date on what's happening with those systems and what changes are being made. For additional support related to enrollments or duplicate students, feel free to contact the Support Center at 919-807-HELP or log into the Remedy portal and create a ticket. 
If you have questions about your NCID, feel free to contact your LEA NCID administrator. Thanks for watching this video, and we hope it's been helpful in giving you a better understanding of what the Student UID system is and how you can get access to it.